are desperate to get their hands on, a prospect that has U.S. intelligence deeply concerned. CNN Chief National Security Correspondent Jim Shuto here with an exclusive report. Brianna, the U.S. military concern not just about state actors getting missiles, the North Korea's, China's, Russia's advancing, but non-state actors, terror groups, including ISIS. And that's what we learned on our exclusive trip. A passenger plane headed from the Netherlands to Malaysia suddenly falls from the sky. <laughs> Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 brought down near the Ukraine-Russia border by Russian-backed rebels <laughs> using this surface-to-air missile system known as the Buk. The ramifications of the strike far-reaching and incredibly alarming because of who may be trying to obtain similar missiles now. Is there any concern today that terrorist groups would have their hands on something like this? I think it's probably safe to assume that, that at some level there are efforts underway. Folks back home are immediately going to say, my God, look at that missile. Can a group like ISIS get their hands on it? It would not be impossible, but we would, we would certainly say that there's going to need to be some training involved. Mark Clark is the director of the Missile and Space Intelligence Center, a branch of the military's own intelligence operation, the Defense Intelligence Agency, or DIA. Located far from the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan in Huntsville, Alabama, the home of America's own rocket program. Filling the agency's grounds are a rogues gallery of dangerous foreign weapons, some captured, some purchased, some acquired by means the DIA won't reveal. So to help train pilots and other warfighters who might come into contact with a weapon system like this in a combat situation, they keep these systems operational. This is still a fully functioning Scud missile. Proliferation of missile technology preoccupies analysts here more than any other threat. We have greater concerns about the smaller missile threats and the likelihood uh, of the proliferation of those. Small only in size, but not in capability. Okay, so this is the SA-7, one of the most common shoulder-fired missiles you'll see out in the world today. Yes. Yeah, there has been well over a million man pads produced, not only of this one, but of other kinds, and there's still hundreds of thousands of them out there. To date, shoulder-fired missiles have targeted some 60 civilian aircraft. And you can buy them on the black market for just a few thousand dollars. One of the main dangers of a missile like this is both speed but also ease, so that someone like me with no experience can put it together and acquire a target in less than a minute. Sights go up, power goes on, you find your target in the air. And you fire your missile. It's incredible. Often the agency here comes into action after rather than before an attack. This is the first time a reporter has been allowed inside the center's technical analysis room. So it's a CSI. It for is the a CSI space. forensic sort of capability, similar to a crime scene investigation sort of thing. A little bit of DNA here and a fingerprint there begins to piece together a pretty um, compelling story. Within minutes of MH17's crash, analysts here sprang into action, desperate to as quickly as possible determine the cause of the crash. As luck would have it, they had visitors that day who could help. A group of uh, representatives from across the intelligence community who do just this kind of analysis. We had them here in the building. So all those experts just happened to be here. It just on happened that day. timing just wise to work out that way. As the outside world debated the cause, the DIA already had a very likely suspect. Within the hour and a half, we were confident that it was a missile that shot it down, a surface to air missile that shot it down. We had a fair idea of which one, although we still had some homework to do. Homework done at lightning speed. Within hours, they were confident they had pinpointed the murder weapon and the perpetrators, telling President Obama that Russian-backed separatists had fired a Russian-made missile that sent nearly 300 people plunging to their deaths. Within 90 minutes, a likely sub sub suspect, and within just hours, they knew who fired the, fired the missile from where and what kind of missile. They were able to tell that with high confidence, something that they don't do lightly, Brianna, to the president. Great report, Jim. Thank you so much. And remember that you can always follow us on Twitter. Tweet the show at CNN Sit Room. Please be sure to join us Monday in the Situation Room. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Brianna Keeler and Aaron Burnett out front.